And my friends, we have no way to make ourselves right with God. We cannot do it. I cannot do it on my own. I cannot gin up from within myself any amount of righteousness or right standing with the God who exists. The God who created everything, the one who created us and whose image we bear, I cannot make myself right with Him. You cannot make yourself right with Him. What hope have we got? That is why the gospel of Jesus Christ is good news because the gospel or good news reveals our hope in that Jesus Christ fully God, fully man, born of a virgin, conceived without sin, was born into this world without sin. Scripture says that he never sinned in thought, in word, or deed. He pleased the Father in every way, yet was without sin. In the Old Testament sacrificial system that God established, with his chosen people, the nation of Israel, the criteria or demands for a sacrifice was literally perfection in the animal that was chosen to be slaughtered to atone for the sins. And with an Old Testament sacrificial system, these animals were slaughtered day after day week after week, month after month, year after year, generation after generation, but they never took away sin. That's why it was a repetitive, continuous action for generation after generation. Yet the fact of the matter is, they were not intended to take away sin, but to point to the one who would take away sin. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ. Just as that Old Testament sacrifice had to be perfect and flawless and without uh, spot, stain, or blemish, Jesus Christ was never stained by sin. Jesus Christ was never sullied by sin in any way, whether through thought, through word, through action. He was tempted in every way that we are, yet was without sin. And the purpose of God taking on flesh and coming to us to live a perfect life was to lay His perfect life down as a sin offering, taking the wrath of God that we deserve. And that is why the gospel is good news. Because the sinless Lamb of God took the punishment that we deserve. He died in our place after living a perfect life that we cannot live. He laid that perfect life down as a sin offering to take the wrath of God that we deserve. He was buried in a borrowed tomb and he was raised from the grave on the third day and his resurrection demonstrates two foundational truths. Number one being his victory, his authority. His power over sin and death and the grave. And number two being the acceptability of His sacrifice before a holy God. And that is why John 14, 6, we read, Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. You won't get there anyway, my friend.